Welcome to Hope Today. I'm Amy Schaefer. I'm here with Tom and Sydney. And I just wanted to say today, happy, blessed, fortunate are those whose God is the Lord. So today we have a lot Amen. to be grateful for, Tom. <laughs> we do have a lot to be grateful for. And coming up in just a little bit, you're going to get to meet two missionaries who are sharing the gospel of all places in Ukraine. I had a chance to sit down with them earlier, Curtis and Teresa Hubble, and they share about how they got started in, get this, motorcycle ministries. I know a lot of us would sign up for that one. Before This was before God called them to minister in Ukraine. So it's going to be a great conversation. It's always incredible to hear how God is using people all around the world to make an impact for the gospel. And something I just want to quickly bring up today because, you know, I love TikTok and there's a big thing happening right now um, on Capitol Hill. There's a congressional hearing with the TikTok CEO that his name is Xiao Chu. So there's a lot of people, Tom and Amy, there's like both sides. So just want to hear your thoughts on weighing in because I know a lot of people are for the ban because it's connected to China. Uh -huh. There's a lot of people right now that are a little upset, like don't ban TikTok because of the community and because of the, you know, the free flow of information. Just want to know what your thoughts are on a possible TikTok ban. Oh yeah, no big deal. Just a, <laughs> just a slight, I do have thoughts on this because my children send me TikTok videos all the time. They're like, hey, and we're laughing. Um, I think social media platforms are kind of like money. It's neutral. It's it's who whose hand is it in and what are they doing with that money or with that social media platform. So as we know, TikTok can be used for good to spread the gospel, uh, to share stories, uh, and also it can be used for bad. You know, I am concerned about a social media company that is run and designed by another nation, especially a nation that might not prefer us and might need to gather information from us or follow trends for us or learn things about us. Mm -hmm. So I am, I am really, I'm really concerned about social media in general yeah. because of the control that it has. I'm talking about myself, Instagram. Yeah. I'm like, you know, yeah. it's like, what in the world? It's become uh, almost like an addiction. Well, in a it, way. It, it can become an addiction. And, uh, you know, I, I don't use TikTok myself, although you can't miss TikTok because it's connected to Facebook and connected yeah. to Twitter, two things that I do use. I think an interesting thing about social media is that, um, you know, they're private companies, but they really are the forum for mm -hmm. speech now. Yeah. They really are. Yeah. They're right. the forum for speech. And so how do we, how is that thing regulated? How is it possible to regulate it when, uh, and some of them say, well, it's a private company, they can expe uh, expel somebody from mm -hmm. it. I'm like, well, wait a minute, that's really close yeah. to squelching freedom of speech. Yeah. So those are all mm -hmm. interesting topics. Mm -hmm. well, I like how you both weighed in on this. So you probably don't like, I, and I agree with both of you because I know there are like security concerns because it's connected with China. And Tom, I agreed with you because it's a great platform for free speech. I am for TikTok. Um, I don't believe a ban should be put like put in place because I think, you know, if you look at Facebook, if you look at Instagram, there's they have a lot of restrictions. So I think it's like to ban one, I think you need to look at holistically all of them. But one thing I been, you know, I'm on the platform and I can honestly say it is amazing just to see the movement that is happening with the content creators and it's a really, it's a huge community is growing and let me tell you, I have never seen on a, if you want to see a move of Holy Spirit 24-7 on, on a social media platform, I've been saying this, go on TikTok. I'm telling you, I've seen deliverances, I've seen people get out of wheelchairs, people being laid hands on, there's young people that are creating all these things, really pushing for the gospel. I've seen people saying like, I'm coming to Jesus, so I just really think there's such a move like that is happening on TikTok and an interesting statistic I've like heard one out of six teenagers are getting all their news from TikTok. From TikTok. So I it's just like, yeah, 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 it's, it's, it's a really I, big thing. Honestly, <laughs> good I, get most of, I get most of my news from Twitter, honestly, yeah. uh, you know, um, it, cause it's just, it's just like right there. But one thing yeah. that I think is important for believers is that it's, it's stupid to not use these platforms for the gospel. Right. Like just to be like, <laughs> I hate everything. I just want to go back to, you That's know, to right. 1940. It it's like, take whatever we can yeah. and use it for the gospel. I mean, we've got all kinds of little clips. The barn out. door is open. We're not, yeah. it's going to be hard yeah. to go back. There's yeah. going to be other things, but yeah. 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 Well, I've so. appreciated our conversation. Hope you, that you enjoyed it too. But right now it's time for the three of us to get all on the same page. Cause you know what time it is. Time for Stump the Host. <laughs> All 
All right, Tom and Amy, and you at home, are you ready to play? Here we go. Question numero uno. Which country had seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine? I want to say Egypt. 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 Yes, I think Egypt. we'll go with Egypt. Yeah. Joseph. Yeah. Egypt. All right. Got there the we go. Of joy. That's so, from no. Genesis 41. And Joseph, what did he do? When he, what did the, 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 he, he stored up, stored up yeah. didn't he? Yeah. He stored up. So they, yeah, that's good. Here's the next one. What happened to the Jews in 587 BC? Okay. I think this is, has to do with Esther. Um, I think so, because I, I swear, I'm like, I feel like it has to do with Esther and with Haman, and they were like, okay, for, for such it. a time as this. Because but, I don't know. It was when Babylon defeated, carried them away into captivity. Uh, or it's, it's that. I just. <laughs> <laughs> it's still Babylon. It's All right, but it's, it, it is Babylon, Babylon carried away in captivity. Yeah. Amen. Yay. <laughs> but it's kind of, you know, on the edge of what you, uh, that whole story too. Because I saw on a footnote in the yeah. Bible reading recently with the story I, of I Esther. Because I on TikTok. <laughs> true. True. <that's, laughs> and here's See our that? final. And here's our like our last question to answer. We are on a roll. What is the name of the feast of unleavened bread? Is it Shabbat? Is it Pentecost? Or is it Passover? Because I'm okay. Because I, is it? It's Passover. Passover. Quick, it's check Passover. TikTok. Passover. Check TikTok. No, it's, it's Passover. Because isn't it like the feet? Like Hold um. Because no. <laughs> I just, I just, I was just, I literally was just reading Feast about of this. Feast of bread. The Feast Passover. Of, it's Passover. It's Passover. Passover. I mean yeah. Passover. What? Like I'm oh, over oh. thinking this. We got it. Passover. And we, really talk, we talked our way through that one, didn't we? <laughs> it is Passover. It is Passover. Yeah. Good, Good job, everyone. I hope you guys do play at home. We have fun doing that. Well, when we return in 60 seconds, you get to see my discussion with Curtis and Teresa Hubble and see how God has used them to share the good news of Jesus in Ukraine. We'll be right back. When Laura called our 24-7 prayer line, she had so much fear that she didn't want to leave her house. She had lost her husband of 54 years just six months earlier. Laura was flipping through TV stations when she came across Cornerstone Television. She felt compelled to call. One of our prayer partners talked, listened, and prayed with her for 45 minutes. At the end, Laura said how much the ministry had helped relieve her fear. Praise God for how He is using CTVN. When you give, you become part of what He is doing. This month, when you give, we'll send wild expectance as our way of saying thank you. This book will inspire you to live your life as God intended. To give and request your copy, visit us online at ctvn.org slash donate or call us at 888-665-4483. Hope happens here. Curtis and Teresa Hubble, missionaries, missionaries to Ukraine, which is a very interesting thing, I'm sure. Curtis, tell me about your story. How did you get involved with Ukraine? Uh, well, that, that story actually starts a long time ago, but we've been going to Ukraine now for the past few years uh, for various lengths of time. Uh, but we, we've been missionaries here in the United States for over 20 years. Uh, doing motorcycle uh, ministry. So. I have to stop you right there before we go on. Tell me about motorcycle ministry. I'm, I'm excited to hear about this. I'm not a motorcycle rider myself, but I think that's a tremendous uh, inroads into a group that maybe doesn't hear the gospel a whole lot. Yeah, you're correct. Uh, the biker culture is very huge in the United States, and uh, it's kind of hard to exaggerate how crazy things can and, and do get. Um, I was, I've been riding motorcycles since I was five years old. And uh, so it was kind of always on my list that I would ride a motorcycle all over the country that I seen my dad do. And, uh, but I was, a, I was a pastor and so I uh, started riding and uh, made it up to the big rally in Sturgis, South Dakota. And uh, I had been praying before we left, God, if there's opportunities, let me see him. And he showed me a group that almost nobody else noticed and it was children. And so uh, here I was in this big rally and I saw kids that were being exposed to things that 
I, I didn't feel they should be. And uh, I just started praying for those uh, children. And I started asking God, would you please guard their hearts and guard their minds and guard their ears and, and their eyes. And I started uh, even getting emotional as I was praying for these children that I was seeing all over the place. And uh, finally, I prayed a very dangerous prayer. I said, God, would you please send somebody to do something about this. And that led uh, us on an over 20 year journey where we went into a motorcycle ministry. Our denomination appointed us as missionary stateside to the biker culture. And uh, we reached out to the whole family. So we did, uh, we did children's ministry at some of the bigger rallies and just had a great, uh, great time doing that. And then I just have to stop and say, I can't imagine children's ministry at Sturgis. I right. would have never, I mean, anybody who doesn't know anything about Sturgis, it's a, a quite a scene of debauchery from what I understand. It, but it, it, yeah. it is. Yeah. And uh, uh, it puzzled me that the children were there, but, but yeah. they, they were. And over the 20 years that we did it, we preached the gospel to thousands of children uh, and then their, their families right along with them. I can't tell you how many times at a, a children's program. We would have as many adults in the crowd as we did uh, children. And then their guards kind of down because here's a guy up here, he's doing puppet show and a few little magic tricks and this. And, and then I preach the gospel just like I, I, I mean, I preach the gospel. It doesn't yeah. matter if it's children or adults. I preach the gospel and we would have strong uh, responses uh, from the children regularly, but sometimes adults too. And so that's, you know, we spent a long time doing that, and then God started stirring me that uh, there was something new to do. And that's where we ended up going to Ukraine to start motorcycle ministry. All right, so you're taking what's successful in the United States mm -hmm. and going over to Ukraine. Teresa, what did you think when, uh, when Curtis said, hey, I feel like God wants to do this in another country? Well, like anything else, I figured he's the visionary and usually it works out. So here we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, a good, that's a good way to be. So uh, uh, let me t tell me about what you did in Ukraine, what you're doing. Obviously, the situation with uh, the war, I'm sure it's affected you. The situation with the pandemic, I'm sure, affected you. Tell me about well, the ministry in Ukraine. Yeah, it was a, it was a very interesting journey uh, because we were doing something completely new. Uh, we, I, I kind of usually do new things. Uh, uh, and so uh, we went over and uh, our, our, our church wasn't quite sure how to get us plugged in. And so uh, we, just, we just went and, and wanted to see how it would go. And it was, it was tremendously successful. Uh, but what I found was the motorcycle ministry was only a, it was actually, even though that's what we went to focus on. It was only a small part of what we were doing. And I saw there was a huge need uh, to disciple young people. Uh, in the nation of Ukraine itself, there's, there's not a lot of young people that see a ministry as a, like a viable thing to do with their lives. Uh, most of the pastors, I, I, I don't talk about pastors as bivocational. Uh, in in this region, I call them like quad vocational at least. It's a very difficult, uh, demanding, sacrificial thing to lead a congregation. And so there's not a lot of young people who are lining up uh, to do this. And there, was, I just saw somewhat of a void where when they saw an American who was willing to leave uh, the lifestyle here, which many of them fantasize about coming to America, and here I am leaving America and going to them. The question that I always got uh, from people as they would meet me for the first time, they would say, are you a real American? And I thought, what, wow. why are you asking this? But what they were asking is, was I born in America? Or am I a person that came, went from Ukraine to America or somewhere else to America and now I'm back visiting? Or what was my story? And when they found out, that I was actually an American. The next question is, why are you here? Right. And yeah. then I said, because God sent me. And then I noticed that they would listen to me. If my, my Ukrainian friends might say the exact same words, they might uh, use the exact same scriptures. But when it came from me, 
These people were on the edge of their seat wanting to know what this American who was sent by God had to say to them. And so we started uh, developing some uh, programs where we could disciple young people, give them biblical training and some job skills along the way, yeah. and then hopefully send them out as uh, church planters and, uh, or, or, or just stronger uh, godly men to get involved in uh, churches. So it started to take on that aspect and then uh, we found a permanent home. We were going to uh, be on a church planting team in Odessa. And so we were very excited when we come back and all of that was rolling and we were, we were in that final phase. Uh, that was starting on March 9th and war broke out on February 24th. Wow. So in a lot of ways, we felt, uh, we felt very devastated because we have family in Ukraine now, not by blood, but we have family. Uh -huh. We have people that are so dear to us. And, and so uh, many sleepless nights and we just I prayed. I had no more tears. I, I mean, I just prayed and prayed. We've been doing that for the last, how many ever months it's been now, just praying that God would bring peace to this region. But it kind of interrupted uh, that plan. Uh, Odessa, where we were going to plant the church yeah, in the sure. news a lot. That's where the war is right now. Yeah. And so things were kind of put on hold and we ended up then going to Moldova to work with local churches and to help with Ukrainian refugees. Right, 495,000 I think mm -hmm. last time I heard are in Moldova, uh, yeah. Ukrainian refugees. So just tell me one thing, where is, what, I mean, what is the heart of God for the people that you're working with? What do, what do you feel when you, you share? I mean, either one of you can answer. What do you feel when you, when you share with them, when you're drawn to them? What part of the heart of God is, is he expressing through you? Well, what, what I believe that, that God communicates to everybody, but especially people in Ukraine and Moldova, is that they are valuable. Um, they're, they are, uh, they're a marginalized uh, people just because of the region that they're in. They're, they're, the, they're the poorest countries in uh, all of Europe and that, that carries a stigma with it in and of itself. Uh, Moldova is, has become a nation of the abandoned. Mm -hmm. Everybody leaves to work uh, in another country. So we met, we met many small children and young people that see their parents maybe a few times a year, but they don't even know them. Uh, we, we met elderly people who are completely alone because their sons are working uh, somewhere abroad and they're just abandoned and forgotten. And what we communicate is they are not abandoned or forgotten because God knows their name. He knows the number of hairs that are on their head and he has a plan for their life. And that's what I love communicating is what I know because there were times in my life that I felt abandoned and forgotten or marginalized. And God was always there to let me know that is not true. And I, I think that's the message that we bring. It's a universal message. Absolutely, uh, but and when you think of so many that are displaced, especially if you're working with Ukrainian refugees, you're kind of like, kind of like mom and dad, I think, in some cases to them because of, of uh, the, the need that is there, fulfilling that need. Teresa and Curtis, thank you so much for being with us. Teresa and Curtis Hubble, missionaries to Moldova and Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Tom, what you doing? Oh, I can't find anything good on YouTube to watch. The commentaries, the blogs, the tier videos, the gaming videos, it's all boring. Oh, have you thought about subscribing to Cornerstone's YouTube channel? Cornerstone has a YouTube channel? Of course it does. Hold on, taking a pause to remind you to subscribe to our channel. Hit that like button and ring that bell for notifications. Now back to the video. I'll show you how to subscribe. Just search for Cornerstone Television Network and hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date getting filled with the Holy Spirit with consistent uploads every day. Keep up with your favorite moments and never miss a beat. Will you help us as we race to 100,000 subscribers? We can't do it without your help. 
The content is never ending with countless hours of entertainment. So subscribe to the Cornerstone YouTube channel today. Hope happens here. We're so glad you're joining us for Hope Today. And you know, one thing we love is to be connected with you. So if you want to know what's happening on Hope Today, on Cornerstone Intelligent Network, we have so many programs to uplift and encourage your spirit. Why don't you give us a call and go and get our newsletter. You see right there, that's like, you see the cute little girl in there. This like, you're, this on this month's theme is chosen by God to fulfill his purpose. So you will get all the highlights of what's coming up, even the programming guide. So we definitely want to connect with you. So you know always what is happening here at Cornerstone. You know, as always, we love to round out and finish the show with an uplifting scripture. And Amy, tell us what we have today. In this scripture, uh, it's in the book of Acts 1, verse 8. Read it with me. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, through Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Come on now. What an important scripture for us as believers. First of all, you're going to receive power. And that power is not just for you to live a successful, victorious Christian life. That power is for boldness. That power is to go out and to bring the light and, and bring it at home first, Tom. Then go from your home to your your, your community, then go from your community to the nations. You know, today we talked about Ukraine. Yesterday, we talked about Iran. Mm -hmm. And it's so important what God is doing all over the world, but we can either be a spectator, we can sit on the bench and watch, or we can get in the game, get on the field and get moving. I like how you say power, by the way. Power. Power, <laughs> yes. Think about Peter, okay? He had just run away from a little girl who said, hey, you're, uh, you, were, you were with Jesus. You know, he just had, uh, had denied Christ three times. He had no power whatsoever in him. But then, and here he was hiding in a room too, by the way, then he gets filled with the Holy Spirit. All of a sudden he has power. He goes out and he preaches boldly right afterwards and 3,000 people were added to the church that day. That's the difference. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what happens when we're empowered. And again, yes, we're empowered to live our lives properly and righteously, but we're mainly empowered to spread that gospel around the world. Well, Tom and Amy, I like how you both point out the power. And I believe in the Greek word is dunamis. And that's where we get like dynamite, I believe. And so just thinking about the power of the Holy Spirit is called to blow some stuff up. You ever seen the action movies where things are pew, pew, pew? That's what, like, seriously, I know you guys get really excited during those action movies, but that's what God has done in us when we have the Holy Spirit with inside of us, that it's like we can go into different atmospheres, like we're, we can set the atmosphere and we can just go and dispel and break up and blow up the darkness because we know that the darkness and Satan has a plan to just cripple people and hold people in bondage. But when we are able to go out and be a witness and talk about the good news of Jesus, when we're able to talk about the truth and love and how it sets you free, Wow, mm -hmm. lives are changed and just one life can just change a whole neighborhood, a whole family, a whole city, the whole yeah. world. So what would it look like if we all went out and been that dynamite, that power that would yeah. go out and just tell one person? And I just encourage you today, this is something that I remember I was at a women's conference and I think her name is Chloe. I forget her last name, but she's from the UK and she said, ask the Holy Spirit when you go to the grocery store or you go to market, just what aisle you're supposed to go through. Or if you're sitting somewhere, just ask him like, okay, who am I supposed to share this with today? Or yeah. what do you want me to speak in encourage someone. And you know, I did that recently with someone and I was like, oh Jesus, this is kind of awkward. It was at a Starbucks, but it's interesting that when you do it, people are so receptive, Amy. Mm -hmm. They're so upset, receptive and so hungry. People are looking for truth like never before. You know, and this, this spirit of power or boldness is not just for extroverts. So I want to talk to all of you out there who might be introverts, who might not feel that boldness like you're seeing here, like, wow, we just are coming at you. My mom, I picked her up last night from the airport and she is on the more reserved, conservative, quiet side. But I'm telling you, she is like on a mission from God. Everywhere she goes, there is a quiet, silent boldness about her where she cannot let somebody come to her home, help at the house, go to the store, go get her hair done. Everywhere, the wait last night, 
we're sitting at the end of dinner and we're talking to the waitress about Jesus and the, the waitress, amen. And oh, this was such a divine appointment right there at Cracker Barrel by the airport. And I'm thinking, Tom, it's not just for extrovert, bold people. It is for all people and it's a command. Well, I think that's a big part of the power. The power is that uh, it, it doesn't rest in us and even our personalities. Praise God for our personalities. They're a gift of God, it's who we are. But he wants us to be able to speak about him through that personality to someone who you uniquely can reach and you need that power to reach. We can't talk anybody into the kingdom. We can't uh, preach the most perfect sermon to them that they'll say, oh, I see all the logic. It doesn't work that way. It's the power of God into their heart, into their soul that says, hey, this is what I need. I don't even understand all this, but I know there's something right here. I know there's something true here. Yeah. Now that only happens if we open our mouth. I mean, yes, we need to live the life before people. But the real power comes when you open your mouth and you begin to declare the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ to someone, however God gives you to do that. Do that, believe that. God has got that power for you. Peter didn't know what to say before that and he sure knew what to say after, okay? And all the disciples, the same thing, hiding at one minute, proclaiming the gospel boldly another minute. That's where the power comes from and that power is, you, is for you today. I feel like what we're saying today is to get out of yourself. I know a lot of times, like, especially in our American culture, like we like, and I'm not, I'm not saying there's anything wrong where we like take, 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 we eat, eat, eat. But if we're like so full and so hungry, like how are we gonna give out to other people? It's better to give than receive. And the greatest gift that we've all received through those in Christ is because of what Jesus has done for us. He paid the ultimate price and because he got up, we're able to get up again and we're able to go and tell the testimony and the story of what he's done in our lives. I love that so much is that what we've walked through, what we've gone through, the hills and the valleys, the mountains, and then we can say, you know what, I've walked through this, I've been through this, and I know the person who was walking with me and that was Jesus. And so we just wanna encourage you today to go out and tell somebody you never know that you're planting a seed and it's a seed for eternity. Amen. So uh, God has got good and perfect plans for you. He's got wonderful things for you to do, things that you couldn't imagine doing, but God is, is excited to see you walk in them. He's thrilled, just like when a baby takes her first steps and the parent's so thrilled. God is so thrilled for the things that he has for you, the things that he wants to see happen in your life. Just yield to him today. Say, yes, Lord, whatever it is, I'll do it. When you do that, all of a sudden, everything in your life becomes animated and God shows you his great love. On tomorrow's Hope Today, giving God all the praise and glory through worship. Grammy-nominated singer, songwriter, and guitar virtuoso Tim Menzies shares about his faith journey and new album that gives all the glory to God. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.